In this video, I'll demonstrate deploying and configuring Arc for Azure VMware Solution. It's important to note that this is in public preview at the time of this recording. Azure Arc allows you to manage your infrastructure and applications anywhere, from virtual machines and containers to SQL servers and other Azure services. Arc for AVS brings that Azure governance and management into vSphere-based infrastructure. It allows you to perform VM operations without having to log into vCenter. You can see the virtual machine inventory, manage power cycle operations, resize VMs, and create and delete VMs, just to name a few things. You can also view and manage other virtual infrastructure components, such as templates, networks, and storage. Keep in mind that because this is in public preview, onboarding Arc for AVS has a few additional steps. Once the private cloud is deployed and network connectivity is established, you'll need to create an isolated NSX segment, then register a number of providers and features within the Azure subscription. Next, you'll download a zip file containing the Arc deployment scripts from GitHub, provide the appropriate information regarding your cloud and deployment in a JSON file, then run the installation script from a jump box with access to the AVS private cloud. Let's jump into the demo. Okay, so we are logged into our Azure portal and we have our private cloud pulled up. We're gonna go ahead and scroll down and look for Azure Arc preview. We can see that the Arc state is not configured, that's okay, that's what we're gonna do in this demo. So let's scroll back up, go to overview, go to our subscription, and from our subscription, we'll click on resource providers. Under resource providers, we're looking to see that connected VMware vSphere, extended location, Kubernetes configuration, and resource connector are all registered. They are, so that's great. We can move back on. So let's go to our private cloud. And actually, we'll go ahead and minimize our browser for now. Uh, this is the config AVS JSON file that I referenced in the previous slide. Uh, so what we're looking for here is just a very simple configuration, right? We wanna make sure that we have our subscription ID, we have our resource group assigned, the name of our private cloud. We also uh, wanna define the isolated NSXT segment name here. Uh, up above, we wanna make sure that we're providing an IP address to the appliance that's going to get deployed within our uh, vCenter server or within our vSphere environment. We will provide a CIDR for that, as well as a small uh, pool for the containers that'll get spun up within that control plane uh, VM, and then the gateway address for that. So again, just a very straightforward, simple configuration file. So that's saved already. We'll go ahead and close that. Already have PowerShell open. We're gonna go ahead and just run the script to onboard Arc into the environment. So what's happening here is we are actually deploying um, a number of Python packages in addition to the Python packages that are required for the deployment and installation, uh, we're actually going out and checking to make sure that all the providers are registered, even though we just did that. We're also looking to make sure the early access and ARC on AVS features are uh, registered and enabled. Then what we're doing is uh, downloading the appliance, uh, uploading that into the vCenter server, uh, converting that to a template, doing all the build work from there. Uh, it'll go ahead and conf fully configure the appliance, and then it'll wait for uh, heartbeats and different things like that. Once everything comes online, the appliance is in a running state, the heartbeats are good, the, all the configurations look good, um, and it checks back in. It will go out and connect to vCenter, and it'll just make that connection between vCenter and Azure. Once all of that is good, it will go ahead and say that the onboard was successful. Now, again, this is a public preview, so um, you know in the future, this may not... Uh, be as a manual effort, it might be a lot smoother, uh, but this is what we're doing today in preview. So now that we have that deployment, that appliance configured, we can go back to our browser. And in our browser, if we scroll down and we look for Azure Arc, now we can see that this is configured, the connection state is connected, and uh, we're good to go from, from that perspective. So let's go over to virtual machines. Here in virtual machines, we can see it's already grabbing our inventory of the virtual machines that are already out there. Uh, so that's great. And there's a number of other things that we can look at here, but first, before we dive into that, let's go to our vSphere client, and we can see that it's already built an Arc RP uh, resource pool. And within that resource pool, we do have our control plane VM. If we go over to VMs and templates view, we can see the Arc folder it created. We can see the Arc template that it deployed, and then it deployed a VM from that template. This, uh, this VM is our control plane appliance, and you can see that it is running. It has the pool of IP addresses that we specified, so everything looks good from that perspective. Let's go back to the Azure portal. 
and from here we can click on resource pools, clusters, and hosts. So what's important to note here is that I've done this demo a bunch of times, and so this stuff is already Azure enabled. When you do this for the very first time, this stuff will not be Azure enabled. So you'll need to come in here and check the boxes for the resources and components that you want to make available to Azure. And why it's important to do that is um, when you decide to deploy a virtual machine from Arc, you need to have these things registered within Azure. Otherwise, you won't be able to select them as resources. So in this case, we'd select the clusters and ESX hosts and resource pools. Just check the boxes, click Enable in Azure. So we can see these are all good. Templates are the same way. This is the Arc template that was just deployed. But uh, here we can see we already have a Linux server that is, uh, or a Linux template rather, that is already enabled in Azure. Um, we have our networks. Again, we've already activated or um, enabled the uh, workloads uh, network segment in Azure. And then we have our data stores as well. So we have the vSAN data store. If we come back up to virtual machines, and you'll see why these it's important to register these uh, or enable these in Azure uh, at this point. So if we click add to add a new virtual machine, um, we want to make sure that subscription and resource group is OK. We're going to give the VM a name. So I'm just going to call this test VM01. Uh, the custom location is fine. That'll default to um, everything that was already defined and built. But this is where it's important to enable those resources in Azure. So we can select this. We can say, hey, let's deploy this VM to a resource pool or to a cluster. Uh, these won't appear if, you're, if they're not enabled in Azure. So that's why that's uh, important to do. So we'll select cluster one, keep the vSAN data store. <clears throat> Here's our uh, Linux template. If you have more templates registered, you'd see more in the list. We just have the one for this demo, and you can see kind of some of the specs uh, for that template. So we'll select that. You can override the template defaults. We're not going to do that today. We're just going to keep it as is, keep it simple. Um, you have the option of also enabling guest management for the virtual machine during the deployment process. Um, that's kind of the point of ARC, so I don't know why you wouldn't, but um, you may not want to. In this case, we're definitely going to do that. We want to be able to manage that VM. So uh, we're going to give it uh, credentials, admin credentials or root credentials since it's a Linux box. Um, once that's all done, we'll go to review and create. We can see the information. Of course, we could go through and, and modify the disks and the networking and things, but we don't need to do that. In this case, we want to use the template as is. So we'll hit create. <clears throat> this will go ahead and, and deploy that virtual machine uh, directly into our vCenter server and enable guest management for it. So now that it's uh, deployed, we can go home, go back to our private cloud, and go to virtual machines. And we can see that this test VM is listed now. It's Azure enabled. It's guest management enabled. It's powered on. VMware tools are running. Uh, it hasn't got an IP address yet, probably because it just hasn't gotten that, that far into the boot process. Uh, but if we click on this, we can now see um, some other things about this virtual machine. Now that it's being man you know, managed within Azure, we can see the image that was used. We can see the, the cluster, the data store that it's on. We can see all of its uh, configuration options. You can see here that this is one CPU, one gig of RAM. So let's go ahead and, um, and change that. But before we do, let's look at vCenter uh, at the vSphere client. And we can see that our test VM was built. It's sitting in the inventory. Um, it's running, has an IP address now. Um, so everything's all good from that perspective. So we go back here, let's go ahead and stop our virtual machine. So now this is us kind of showing uh, power cycle operations, right? So we can stop, restart the VM uh, without having to require uh, user access to the vCenter server. So now that this is stopped, let's go to size. Let's change this to two CPUs and two gigs of RAM. Save that. <clears throat> Once that's saved, we can go back to overview. We can see that that's been changed here. Let's go ahead and start that virtual machine. Now we start that virtual machine. Let's come back here. We can see that it's powering on. We can see that it's got two CPUs, two gigs of RAM. And if we drill into the tasks here, we can also see that we initiated a guest shutdown gracefully. Uh, we reconfigured the virtual machine and we powered the virtual machine back on. So just uh, some high level stuff here. Um, it's nothing earth shattering, but it's nice to be able to kind of get that information and kind of maybe manage some of those um, administrative tasks from the Azure portal versus having to necessarily go into the vCenter server or the vSphere client to do that. And that concludes our demo showcasing Arc for AVS. To learn more about Azure VMware Solution, check out these great resources.